If you're interested in learning about aeroponics, this Debaco University video will help you understand aeroponics in more detail. All right, let's look at aeroponics for cannabis production. Well, starting off with the basics of aeroponics. And aeroponics basics are the plants are grown while suspended in air with water and nutrients splashed or misted onto their roots. This system uses minimal water and nutrients if done correctly with no reduction in plant performance. Now, while there are commercial systems, this kind of shows kind of a DIY kind of version here of what a grower kind of constructed to create this aeroponic system just to show you how simple it can be. There's, now we're looking at the general system. Again, there's many different types, all with the same premise. Aeroponics involves a reservoir with a nutrient solution and a raised planter bed. The roots are suspended in the air, as we can see in this image up here, and typically do not make direct contact with the nutrient solution in the reservoir, but have the solution delivered via a mist or supplied via a pump there. And we kind of see the little spray jets evident right here. Typically plants are started in rock wool or other medium and then placed into the aeroponic system so the roots have some substrate that they initially start in. The system can be used for clones and initially gets roots started uh, for cuttings as well. Now the advantages to this system, as you can kind of see here, the pictures of the roots kind of speak for themselves. And the, how you can get, how do you get roots that look like this? Well, the advantage is the grower has full control over the nutrients delivered directly to the roots of the plant. Side to that is the grower has full control over the nutrients. So the grower is needs to be on their game, so to speak, with making sure they're delivering the right amount of nutrients in the right concentrations where more is not necessarily better. Also, this system allows for aeration of the root system. The water use is very efficient, and there's no need for growing medium, potentially maybe a little rock wool at the beginning, eliminating this cost and also the disposal issue with a lot of growers often forget about. However, no system is perfect, so the disadvantages are due to the high level of control a grower has. This needs to be attentive, uh, so they may not be the best option for new growers. So this system can perform great yields, can perform great roots, but as I said, the grower needs to be aware of what's going on. So new growers just getting started may struggle. Careful monitoring of, uh, is essential, which allows for nutrient concentrations as well as pH values. Typical nutrient solutions are changed every seven to 10 days, and the system should be cleaned between grow cycles, if not more often. The plant life depends on the life of the pump, so growers need to be monitoring the pump and ensure that they also have backups and electricity supplied to this type of system. There can also be some upfront cost that may be prohibitive to some growers who are looking to implement potentially this system. The equipment, just to kind of show a little image of kind of general equipment, is a container with a lid. The lid will have some form of uh, plant support. Inside of the container, water pump with misting heads in this region here, a water monitor, and of course a nutrient solution to ensure the plants are being properly fed. Now the targets for uh, using uh, this type of system would be to have a, a continuous water monitor. So you need to have that continually monitoring that water and the levels of that water. To start with, you're looking at a PPM usually around 700, temperature of the water around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and a pH around 5.5 to 6.5 with the target or ideal pH being 5.8. Again, these just provide you with some general initial targets and you can tweak them from here as you see fit for your cannabis growing operation.